This is my review of Dr. Stone, chapter 114, Silently Science Pierces the Stone, and honestly a little disappointing when, when Koaku finally got to the uh, Soyuz space capsule and it quite literally crumbled in her hands. Oh, I, I mean, I get it's been 3,000 years, but this is a freaking Soyuz space capsule. It is literally one of the most indestructible things we can make, and yet even it is not immune to time. Even it is literally crumbling to dust here. I'm a little curious why no one's actually tried to open this thing in 3,000 years. I mean, it's not like it's been well hidden or anything. I get their founders have the whole prophecy. Do not open this, for it is for Senku only to open, or something like that, but... I'm kind of doubting the current master and advisor are all too, you know, gung-ho about following the orders of the founders, so... Curious. Anyway, thankfully that inside of it is, uh, concrete. Yes, they figured that'd be the best way to preserve all things inside it, like they did with the glass record. It's preserved perfectly in concrete so that the weathering can't get to it. Now they have a little bit of an issue, though, because they need to, you know, open it, get all their freaking science stuff, but they can't really do that because <laughs> that'd be making way too much noise, and unfortunately, silent bombs don't really exist. Oh, no, actually, silent bombs do exist. They are a very real thing, and they're basically just plaster, so interesting. Essentially, they don't really explode so much as they expand, incredibly so, to the point where they can break through concrete and basically anything else. It was made for demolitions in residential areas where they don't want to make too much noise or have jackhammering all day. So Senku sends the uh, Mysobiles with everything she needs to break the concrete, and I just really have to ask. I mean, I know I said this before, it seems impossible that they're actually, you know, getting these mice to her without anyone really catching on or catching the mice, but getting them there without the, and breaking any of the vials inside, that's, that's something else entirely. I'm honestly a little disappointed. I feel like this series is going a little too far out of the realm of, you know, scientific realism for the sake of just getting the story moving forward. But, you know, whatever. Anyway, in order to distract from the fact that our lioness is uh, currently using a drill to break through the concrete, Amarilla starts to dance. We can dance. We can dance. Uh, saying that she wants to oh, practice my dance for the master. Which is just, again, Amarilla, you terrify me with that goody two-shoe adorable little baby doll routine. Truly, truly terrifying. Unfortunately, this is enough to fully distract them when they start to hear scraping, so Jinro has to, uh, do something. I mean, he literally steals the main guy's spear, and they all look like, oh my god, this girl's gone crazy, she's gonna murder us! But then he starts doing his spear dance, which... Okay, you're actually good at something for once. Go, Jinro! Even the guards are amazed, like, ooh, that's amazing! Though his explanation is absolutely pathetic. He perfected the spear dance as a way to... scare his enemies into retreating so that he could run away. Just to make it look like he was better with the spear than he actually is, which... Oh, good lord. I feel like he could have just spent that time, you know, getting better with actually fighting with a spear, and then... he wouldn't have had to run away. But, you know what, whatever. Juno's gonna do what he's gonna do. So anyway, Koaku now has all the holes in there, and now she has to put in the chemicals. One of each, with the, uh, I'm assuming that's a wooden stopper on the end. And over the next couple hours, they will expand with a force of 300 kilograms per square centimeter. So, quite literally a bomb. So, they shot it open, and I'm assuming she now has access to everything inside it. Then get a... Little flashback to his father saying that someday, Senku, I know you'll restore the world in a snap just like that. Senku can only laugh. Oh, Papa. I didn't call him Papa, but I'm going to say Papa. Oh, Papa, you should know better than anyone. Science doesn't happen in a snap. But slowly and surely, silently, our science will pierce the stone. And honestly, this whole thing was just a great metaphor for the series. I mean, I mean, I quite literally cried. When we first saw, you know, his father tell him, Senku, I'm leaving these people behind, my descendants. And it's like a chain connecting his father all the way to Senku, to the people there who are going to help him. I, I love that scene in this. 
this one's pretty great as well. I mean, they're shattering the stone just like they shattered free from the stone, just like they freed the people from the stone again and again to find the thing that his father left for him, to find the treasure that he can use to free not only his friends, but literally the entire world. He shattered the stones so that he can shatter all the stones. Uh, so next week... That's going to be interesting, to say the least. I mean, best case scenario, she gets a platinum to him and he starts working on, you know, turning it into a thing that can free everyone from the stone and he can, you know, free all of his allies, free all the other people who have been turned to stone the island and lead just, like, a violent assault against the master. I just don't think that's the way it's going to go. I think Koaku's about to get caught breaking open the stone and the master will get all the stuff and we'll have to go with, like, a plan B or something. Not sure what that's going to be, considering... You know, their best fighter was just captured, but uh, we'll see what happens. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Will Senki get the Platinum, or will Kohaku be captured? Or will both happen? Be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, peace.